It's a great day to talk rehab. I'm Dr. Donald DeFabio. Thanks for watching. It's muscle of the month, rotator cuff, and we're going over the four sits muscles, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, and subscapularis. This episode is all going to be about the infraspinatus and teres minor. They are what's called external rotators. Now, we're going to go over common issues with these problems and how to rehab those muscles. However, if you really want to know the details, go to my clinical rounds video and we're going to talk about how to diagnose the shoulder properly. All right? um, it's really for clinicians, so docs, make sure you watch it. But I think people who've been following my videos or non-clinical uh, uh, viewers will also get a lot out of it as well. All right? As a bare minimum, you'll know what questions to ask your doc about your shoulder pain. So, infraspinatus. You know, people throw their arm out, right? Well, when you throw, the infraspinatus back and through here has to keep the arm bone in the socket. It's a very important decelerator. You landing on an outstretched arm, it's got to prevent the humeral head, the arm bone, upper arm bone, from going back and getting straining the muscles on the back here. So that's where the infraspinatus is going to be. And like I said, it's more of an external rotator. You know, they call it the rotator cuff because these four muscles all attach to around the top of the humerus, the arm bone, that ball part of the ball and socket, giving you mobility, strength, and stability. And these are, you know, very powerful and strong muscles and tendons. So let's go over those exercises. Uh, Mike, grab me a, uh, a blue band, a blue CLX, and come on over here. So we talked about a lot of the pain is going to be in the back. Interesting, infraspinatus knots and trigger points oftentimes will give you pain right here in the front. So if you're having pain in the front, sometimes it's actually coming from the back. Mike, side everybody. Hello. Um, so one of the great things about the infraspinatus is a huge stabilizer. However, when we start off by training it with just plain old arm weight, okay? So let's do a side-lying external rotation, Mike. So just lie on your side. Facing up? Yeah. Let me face the camera. Everybody can see you. All right. Keep the neck nice and balanced. Shoulders are stacked. Elbows pinned to the side. And you're just going to rotate up. And just externally rotate. Great way to train the uh, infraspinatus. Okay? And you're also getting the teres minor. From there, you can take your CLX band, put your hand through the loop, and then just grab it with the other side and through here, just kind of wrap it around. And then you can add some resistance. Try to keep the elbow nice and tight, okay? Got it, you're all tangled up there, Mike, you got it? There we go. And yeah, don't worry, I'm not gonna ask him to, uh, to, uh, to uh, chew gum. You really want to get the greatest, the best angle, the best way to do this, let go for a second. Lift up, just come around this way. Okay? Now, when he... No, no, you got to tangle. You got to tangle. There you go. There we go. Now, when he rotates up, he's in the angle of the forearm and in line with the joint, so it's not pulling the joint in the wrong direction. A little note, but very important, when you're losing elastic resistance, you want it to work in the angle of the joint. So when the joint is fully... Uh, extended and the muscles contracted, the band is in the line that you want to create the torsion. So external rotation starts there. Once he can do it that way, then we introduce scapular repositioning, like we've talked about. All the exercises have to come from here. So reset the scapula, and then you can do external rotation with the band, just actively, keeping it in. Now, that's a great technique. Mike's got really good control, however, if you find that's difficult or if it's bothering your shoulder, take a rolled up towel, a small pad, pillow, pin it, and then turn out. Opening up that arm, the femur, to the chest by about 20 degrees keeps the humeral head, the ball, part of the ball and socket of the shoulder, in proper anatomical alignment. All right? Same cadence, turn out. Hold one, two, and then slowly go back. Again, if you can't go all the way out, only go up to the point of pain. 
Always work around, but not through the point of pain unless your doc tells you to. Eccentric loading, I'm sounding, uh, we talked about this with some of the other videos, is the biggest bang for your buck for what's called tendinosis. That's the negative. So let's do an eccentric. You know, hop the pad back, let's make it consistent for, I would try it this way first, then go without it, okay? Because uh, this is the safer way. So externally rotate, load the band, and then slow let it go. Externally rotate, load the band, and go. Great way to stabilize the shoulder. And like I said, the infraspinatus is real important for deceleration when you throw, but look at me. Throwing is here, isn't it? It's not here. It's not lying on your side. So how do we get that? Stand, please. First of all, uh, switch hands and lie on your back with your head on the stability discs. First way to do it is to put a loop there. Second is to put the other loop over your foot. That's why I love the CLX. Then go to 90-90 position. Ideally, if he was on the floor, his elbow would be level. And now, externally rotate. You go there, okay, and slowly recover. And just go right there. It's not, that was perfect. And come on back. It's not a full stretch into internal rotation. We just want to work the external rotation from neutral to external rotation, getting you ready for throwing and decelerating. Once you can do that, then you can stay probably just like that. Like stand, please. Then you can go to 90-90 standing. Now you notice, again, the shoulder stays level. It is so important that the shoulder doesn't hike up when you do these exercises. And with this one, the elbow's also got to be at 90 degrees. Don't let that elbow dip, because now you're getting other muscles involved and you're not targeting this, that, that uh, external rotator or infraspinatus and teres group. 90, 90, 90, and then externally rotate from there and slowly recover. Right there, externally rotate and then slowly recover. You don't need to go relax any further down than that because then it could start to strain what's called the anterior, the front part of the shoulder. So the infraspinatus, one of your rotator cuff muscles, do your concentrics, do your eccentrics. If you're getting any knots in through there, thanks Mike. If you're getting any knots in through there, uh, then you can use the massage stick on it to, to work them out, all right? Um, is the infraspinatus an issue? Well, again, watch the clinical rounds video and that'll give you some idea on what you need to target. It's a great day to talk rehab. Thanks for tuning in, liking and subscribing. I'm Dr. Donald DeFabio and guess what? We'll see you on the next video.